Hi everybody, Brett here from All Video Productions and I'd like to take you through a little walkthrough guide on how I created that animation you've just seen. That was from a recent project with a client. Uh, the client was called Foresight Forecasting and they are a recruitment agency and they asked me to create this animation based on X-Men Cerebral Sphere that Xavier goes into to find all his mutants or whoever he wants. This was all created using Adobe After Effects, the latest edition, Adobe CC 2018. Also using Video Copilot's Element 3D. All of that combined together with some of the optical flares as well, the Video Copilot optical flares. Let's go straight in to After Effects here. And there's a few different elements that uh, brings this together, obviously Element 3D and Optical Flares and using After Effects to animate the camera to go through the 3D space. Now just a few little things before we start, this computer that I've got is a brand new computer, a uh, little rundown on it, it's got the Aces Prime Z270 motherboard with the Intel i7 uh, 770K, we have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Uh, it also has two 8GB ASUS Strix 1070s uh, and we're running a 500GB uh, Evo uh, 850 solid state drive and not forgetting the Corsair HHEI version 2 of the water cooler. So we are obviously quite well off, we're well endowed with, uh, with the components that we can run this baby with. Now. Here we are in After Effects, and as you can see, there was there were six different compositions from the doors opening for it spinning around the cerebral fear, uh, and then basically just different camera angles. So one thing that I've learned from Video Copilot is once you've made one composition of everything, you can then duplicate that and then just move the camera around. It saves you trying to move the camera in one foul swoop across one composition so just make we i just made that up in one composition and then just duplicated it and then i could move the camera wherever i liked so let's jump into element 3d here uh, scene setup one of the things i looked at was a few diagrams x-men cerebro loads of images and i was just taking an idea from this we wasn't creating it exactly the same i just wanted to get the element of that that sphere and as you can see you know a similar thing with these panels uh, and the platform so I thought okay we'll, we'll do something with with the platform and the basic sphere can't can't really go wrong with that so all I start all, all I did to create this was use a primitive uh, round box round box there it is round box just use that round box and what I did with the round box is I manipulated it uh, in the controls so if I just get rid of the platform for now, because we want to focus on a square, I click OK, gives me the square. Now I'm going to quickly use my camera to move forward. And if I just scroll around a bit, as you can see, we have a lovely sphere created from the boxes. Now to create this, I think we're in group one here particle replicator basically what I did with a particle replicator I moved this from a point so if I switch that to a point so if I switch that from a point as you can see it's just that one singular box what I did with the box is I used some of the deform tools and I did a few little things just to make it into this kind of what kind of shape would you call that almost an upside down pyramid kind of esque thing changed it into that and then from there i changed the point from a uh i changed the replica shape from a point to a sphere and then i just duplicated it let's go to 100 see now as you can see we duplicated that and we have the severe so i thought okay well that's going to work so i just literally went for the 400 range boom and that kind of made enough for these for these panels and it worked really well so that was how I created the sphere. Coloring the sphere, I think I just went into Element and used some of the clean metal brush from the presets. Pro shaders, probably metal. So clean metal brushes. Uh, and then all I did is just color correct it uh, in the basic color settings down here in the diffuse color settings. 
which then made it into this kind of brushed metal look more metal a look and to light this I used two different lights we have a spotlight from the top which is what I use we have two things in there spotlight from the top which just gives it a bit of light from the bottom and it diffuses all the way up and there's a parallel light as well which I used for the drop shadow because as you know if you've used element 3d uh, you can get some really nice uh, drop shadows from that uh, to work um, in element 3d and you can get it to work on other surfaces as well if you're doing filming in outside in the actual environment you can get get uh, uh, very good photorealistic shadows so I use the parallel light to get the shadows so if I move back and I'm going to quickly show you the setup of the platform so let's open up the platform let's just close that off for a second now the platform is made up of as you can see quite a few different elements mainly from the motion design the mech surfaces so there's the mech surface it's just the flat surfaces da -da 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 -da, mech surface just there I've just added another one in by mistake where is he there he is uh, and all you're doing is you're literally just turning it over keeping my finger on shift as well so you can get the 90 degree angles flat like that let's go back to there and you can move it around and I just positioned loads of these and what I did with these as well I think yeah I position them so the little uh, round thing is on the bottom side uh, and obviously with all of these surfaces especially within this main platform the reflection uh, reflection reflection mode is on spherical so what's going to happen is you're going to get the reflection uh, mapping of everything around that in a sphere and that's why you can see some really cool reflections happening on um, uh, on the surfaces especially there look so you can see it's reflecting the environment and if I come back to the mech doors let's go back to these guys and as you can see at the bottom there you've got the middle of this door I can never remember how you move oh, that's the light that's the light oh, that's oh, it's like that isn't it yeah there we go <laughs> I can never remember how to move this camera around in element 3d it's like whoa so there you go you can see the lovely reflections and I thought to myself that's we just want to make it glossy and look really cool you know this is this is a, a really uh, kind of uh, medical facility environment whatever it may be you know no sta static free room so it's got to be clean all the time uh, and basically this is just built up of different elements so let's get rid of that component there that's part of the door so if I was to move this out there's the door element just there again all through the uh, the motion design too, the mech surfaces and stuff like that uh, and, the, and the different components just using those just seeing what works um, mech disc which one was this let's have a look that's a disc in the middle of the door and when I animated these what I had to do is use the aux system and link them all together so the mech disc if I go into auxiliary is set to channel 10 so in element when I go back into the group which I think was group 2 and I go to the aux channel down here and then you can literally animate any of those single elements in element 3d which is paired to the channel which you've uh, you want to animate so that was in aux channel 10 so like I was saying let's go to group 2 positions here if I move that already you can see that I'm using aux 10 uh, to move those individual individual components and that's what I did and that's how I animated the door now the lights um, which come on uh, I used I was messing around with these and I just thought what how, how how can I make some really cool dynamic lights that you know kind of illuminate the the doors entrance and a few other cool bits so let me go back into the platform here and what I've got is single lights there's one there which I used now these are all to do with the backlights so you've got single arrays light rays here sorry light rays single lights uh, I think I used one of these single lights for the middle one yeah there we go oh there he is that one is the middle one just there it's just popped up on the on the top left and then the light rays 
Okay, so looking at these lights, uh, what I use is a single light rays. Let's go into these panels here. And I use these as floor illuminations and we just I just duplicated those. There is easier ways to duplicate these lights within uh, Element 3D. Um, you can, I think somewhere you have a, 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 there's like a duplication mode. I can't remember where it is. You're going to have to forgive me. It's not often I get to use this, but when I do, I'm like, oh, so excited. I don't know what to do with it. But if you've got a plan to do it, then do it. Uh, so within element once you've once you've done that obviously you can go into the settings go to the rendering settings and you have your glow and again i enabled the glow and this uh, at the minute it's not enabled because and if i there we go just move it forward get rid of the glow as you can see the glow there you can change that different illumination settings and get yourself a really cool uh just lighting setup well what i want to do is obviously make this as kind of <laughs> as realistic as possible but obviously it's not that realistic but i really enjoyed putting this together one of the other things i was talking about was shadows as you can see here the shadows on the floor if i just disable that they've now gone obviously i wanted to get some some uh, drop shadows from from the lighting within the room as the doors open and the shadow mapping used as is the mode and the light the kind of light that's going to do uh, these kind of uh, things is the the parallel light uh, and that's how i created the the shadows on the platform now obviously the platform is it's a separate group so if i was to move this as you can see it's <laughs> it's in the middle of the environment there uh, and that's how i make because obviously i made these as separate separate elements come on brett sort yourself out there we go it's a separate element so i just used that and put it into 3d space and i was like oh yeah that worked really well there the smoke if you look over oh the camera's going to move like really dramatically the smoke you can see uh that was from video copilot's action essentials all i did was mask a few of those out the shape of the door and it to, to create like a, a you know a the uh, the compression of the the doors hydraulics sort of opening um, and I just used a few different uh, atmosphere and a, and a shield one which worked really well for this kind of dispersion as it opens the door there and it moves in that way of the dispersion I just did some masking mask uh, animation just to make the smoke move completely out of the way and then the camera obviously goes through the middle and then tilts upwards uh, in the middle obviously we've got the optical flare at the top uh, and then as i say i duplicated the the, uh, the 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 composition so then all i had to do is insert the text make the text look really cool animate the um, camera as i wanted we just put loads of different text layers in as well and obviously you can see the dynamic shadow there underneath which looked really cool final composition where it's underneath and then the lens flares like <laughs> comes in and Blah! And the final one from the top where the camera runs down from the top and then it goes into the screen now the this guy here bruce this was a separate element composition i made up and it just says welcome to foresight um and then obviously bruce is there as a separate composition just inserted in as a 3d What's it? The camera zooms in. He's there. Welcome to Foresight. Boom. And you're done. Uh, and that's how I made this whole thing. Quite simple when you have a brief and you know what you want to do. Obviously, if you sit down on, on Element 3D, anything After Effects wise, I find that if you don't have a brief, you can just be sat there and you can be you can be learning, but you can be losing time as well because you, you kind of want to get you'd want you want to pay off out of this. I think it's it's such a great um piece of software to use and create anything you want that you want to be showing what your abilities are and what you can do and and this is this is great to have this brief and to be able to have this chance to work on this so thank you guys at foresight and thank you to my perkins who um passed me on to foresight guys for, for to doing this animation so my perkins big big up big up and thanks very much so i'm going to leave you with that any questions please leave some comments or uh, anything you have, I can do some more tu tutorials of bits and bobs. You can go to our website, avp.camera, uh, and you can go to the animations and graphics side. You can see other things that we've done, Element 3D. I love that stuff. I can't stop using it. Woo! I want to make more. 
And I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Sorry I've gone on, but I hope it's been worth it. Bye-bye.